Rock Guys would like to welcome Clark Walker, AZ. Hey, man, what's up? What's going on? Oh, not much, man. Just chilling out in the studio. Cool, cool. Beautifully, uh, beautiful, beauti <laughs> you try it. <laughs> <laughs> Brutally beautiful. Yeah, it's a hard one, you know, but 17 songs? That's it, man, 17. Wow, you really get the, you know, you gave the fans uh, the money worth uh, on uh, the CD. Uh, you did put out an EP uh, back in 2006, uh, uh, Sweating Bullets, and, uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, the, you know, Moving forward, uh, the new CD uh, must have been a, a big change, huh? Oh, yeah, very much so. That EP was supposed to be the uh, precursor to this album we just released, but right after we got done with that EP, we ran through the gauntlet of drummers. We lost our drummer and was trying to find that right fit, you know, so by the time we finally got everything in line, here we are, you know, it's 2014 and we're finally getting it out, so really excited to have it out. Cool. Now, 17 songs. Why? You know? I mean, that's well, a lot. Look, yeah. Um, <laughs> you look back, there's a good bit of time in there. We actually were pulling from a stockpile of about 40 to 50 songs to narrow down to 17. Right. And, uh, I mean, we went through in the studio and pretty much, you know, did a rough recording of almost all those songs and said, hey, this is what we want to use. And we wrote a lot during the process, too. And I'm a big fan of albums that you can listen through and it not repeat twice before you get to work. Right. I mean, I like that full value. I like, you know, just the fans to get a value out of that hard copy. I wanted them to give the fans incentive, you know, to purchase that physical CD with the booklet. And instead of just downloading the album, even though, you know, we'd love for anybody to get, get our music, period. But if they're going to buy the full album, I mean, they're getting, like you said, it's, you know, good value. You're getting... You know, much better than ninety nine cents per song. Right, right, right. You're basically getting a double album for the price of one. Yeah, pretty much. You know, so like, uh, you know, I'm sure the fans really appreciated that. I know I do. You know, so uh, you know, any anything, you know, I get a little bit more of. I'm uh, happy with. You know, and um, my my favorite song is Reflux. I I thought that uh, song blew me away. You know, I just listening to it. I mean, I didn't watch the video yet or nothing. I just you know sat back and listened to that song. I mean, it has all the right elements uh, for any fan to uh, really enjoy that song. And uh, you know, I congratulate congratulate you on the, the album so um, you know hopefully uh, this uh, helps you know shoot the the band to you know start them or wherever you want to call it and um, you know yeah man I appreciate it a lot you know now the yeah. band's originally from Alabama right yes we are right um, um, just south of Huntsville cool cool now, now members of the band they Tell me a little bit about each member of the band and, and, and what do they bring, you know, what kind of elements do they bring to the band? I, I know, you know, like Josh Smith, and you know he's a guitarist, but, but what else does he have that really shines on stage? Well, um, Josh Smith, which we uh, we coined J2 because we've always had, seem to have a bunch of Joshes in the band, so it's a lot easier. <laughs> we like never actually call anybody by their name anymore. Right. It's a... Uh, um, our original guitarist, Josh Thompson, we call him Thompson, and we call the new guy J2. So. Right. Um, but, yeah, but uh, what he brings, um, I've known him for a good long while since he was you know, pretty much a kid, and he's got a really good look, stage presence, good performance. He's got really good vocals along with his guitar playing. Right. And um, for those who know us as a band, um, they know that we lost our bassist about a year and a half ago. He was one of the original members. Right. And one of the things he brought to the table was his backup vocals. And when we lost him, that left a huge gap that we needed to fill because harmonies and thick vocal layers are a big part of what we do. So him being with us now, he can you know aid and help with that lack of what we were missing when he was gone, which is harmonies, you know, and extra screams, which helped me save my voice a little right. and everything like that. And I, I, I definitely could hear that uh, on the disc. Uh, you know, you know, I'm definitely a big fan of harmonies and, and uh, layovers and stuff like that. And I, you could definitely, when I'm listening to the CDs, I could hear how good it is, you know. So, um, you know, that's great. So Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the other members. Um, well, we've got Josh Thompson. Um, who is our original guitarist. He's been with me um, for all the journey, other than about six months when we started. Um, he is the most reliable guitarist you'll find. He's 
He's extremely consistent, and he's a great riff rider. Like since the beginning, I mean, the way we approach it is he'd he'll just throw me riffs, and then I'll, you know I'll take it and kind of take that with something I've got, and that's the way we mold songs a lot. But he's he's just my go-to guy. He's like my left arm on stage. Like I know he's going to be there. I know he's going to be playing what he needs to, and he's going to you know bring his A game to every show. So I couldn't do it without him. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, and then we've got uh, Mr. Drew Hobbs, who I would call our new drummer. He's been with us about three years now, um, and uh, younger guy. And he came from kind of a death metal, black metal, hardcore um, genre background. Right. Um, so he's you know very fast. Got got you know the double bass, fast feet. Um, you know blast beats. He's great at all that kind of stuff. So when we lost the drummer before him. We were looking for a drummer that could make us heavier, but blend well at the same time. So um, a, a big thing for me with Drew was he was a fan of all genres. He wasn't a genre hater. Um, he can appreciate any type of music, you know, from, you know, you got Breaking Benjamin, you know, to Lamb of God, um, to Slayer. So, and him meeting us in the middle with his really heavy background kind of brought us to the level that I wanted to be as right. far as heaviness. And uh, it was a really good blend. And now that he's been with us for three years, um, he, you know, we're finally getting really tight and getting that, you know, that brotherhood with him going. Cool. Um, and then that leaves Bud Gillespie, who is our bassist. Uh, and he was the one who filled the shoes of Josh Gant, our last bassist who passed away. Um, and he had very big shoes to fill. So that was a, you know, a hard spot for him to walk into. And he's done a great job. Um, you know, working with us, he's an extremely hard worker and he helps me with a lot of the online business, you know, managing all those social sites, which any of you guys that are in bands out there know that that is a ton of work to do to manage multiple social sites and stay on top of all that. Right. And, um, he is a very huge asset when it comes to handling all that business as well. Cool. Cool. Now, now with the, the music of the band, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's aggressive, yet it's also melodic. Was that like difficult for you guys to like, you know, put a melodic side into a, a, a aggressive band and a little bit heavier than you know the typical melodic sound? It, I mean, you get you got great choruses, like you said, you got back, background harmonies, um, but like you know, you could draw in regular rock people and aggressive people at the same time with with your music. Exactly, and it wasn't hard at all. That's that's who we are, and that's kind of exactly what we wanted to do, and I'm really glad that you put it that way because the bands that we've drawn the most from being like Seven Dust, uh, the band that we played with, um, you know, the like two nights ago, Nonpoint. Right. Um, these are all really aggressive bands, but they've got really good singers, and they got really good melody, really good um, rhythm and phrasing with their vocals, and I enjoy singing, I enjoy screaming. And I want it aggressive, but I want people to be able to sing along, too, you know, because that's right. where you get that that fan value where they can sing along with what you're doing, you know. But I, I enjoy the heavy stuff as well, so I wanted to find a good marriage between the two. And I think we did that really beautiful. I was really happy with the end, the end result. Right. I, I think you did an excellent job because, like I said, just listening to the tracks, I think I got to, like, track 10. And, um, you know, like, y y again, y you gave both the best worlds, you know, uh, you I mean, like, my daughter could listen to it, or, like, someone like me who likes aggressive music and stuff like that, you know, could listen to it. So we both could share the same thing, and, and I, I think you'll draw in a lot of fans from uh, this disc, you know. So um, I also see that you're going to be working on an acoustic album, you know, with the aggressive <laughs> music again. H how's that going to work with, you know, doing an acoustic uh, uh, album coming in 2015? Well, it's, it's those melodic vocal lines that make that possible. You know, it's I, I can take the melodies, the rhythms. We can maybe slow the tempo down just a little bit. Right. And, um, you know, just basically what we do is we'll swap things out with some open chords, um, even totally redo some things, you know, like um, make it maybe a little bluesier, um, you know, maybe some hand percussion as right. opposed to you know, like a full drum beat and, you know, changing things up a little bit. And it's, it's fun for us. Um, and like you said, it opens up a whole another fan base for us. Right. There's a lot. There's a huge fan base for acoustic stuff, and we enjoy doing it. So, um, what we plan on doing a lot is when we're out on the road, 
we're able to go out to say, you know, just for example, the other day we went out to Guitar Center, um, did an acoustic in store. Right. Like we we can we can do that kind of thing during the day, you know, or smaller smaller places, smaller venues, and then go, you know, bring it hard that night and do our aggressive thing. So, just trying to open the doors, you know, as we can. Cool. Cool. I, d- I definitely applaud you for doing acoustic, uh, you know, album coming up next year uh, because a, a lot of bands can't do that. You know, they um, shy away from that because when when you do an acoustic set, you really get how good of a musician this band will yeah. be. You know, and you're it, exactly right on that. You know, I mean, you could live, you could basically do whatever you want, but like acoustic, you're out there. You're you're in front center stage. And you'll know how good this band really is, and and I think you know by you guys doing the acoustic album, uh, it just shows you have uh, a lot of confidence in this band. Oh yeah, I mean it'll scare you to death. Like, <laughs> I mean it will, man. Like we can play a lecture, like you said, in front of a thousand people. We can crank that shit up and just play hard, and like that covers up a lot right. of mistakes for bands. But when we go play in front of ten people, acoustic, you know, I'm like shaking out of my bones because you miss <laughs> one note. Everybody's going to know it, you know. Right. There, you're, there's nothing to cover it up. So yeah, it's exactly right. Wow, that's cool. Now, you're going to be uh, doing uh, some recording at Architect Studios in New Jersey, where I live. Yes, um, that's that's the plan, and we're hoping in uh, the 2014, early 2015, that we'll be able to get up there and uh, track this acoustic album uh, at Architect, and that's just where uh, Seven Dust just did their uh, Time Travelers and Bonfires up there. Right. And I got to, um, you know, we got set up there with those guys um, and meet, you know, the producers, the engineers and all that. And I was just really, I was really happy with their sound and how everything worked up there. And we got to meet George uh, Roscos, who's the owner of Architect. Um, and uh, he also manages a couple of bands like Three Years Hollow. And um, we're working with him now. And it's just, it's all working out really well. You know, it's, the, the studio is a great studio and it's good to get away because um a lot of people don't know that i i run a studio down here in alabama and that's where we did really beautiful is at our studio right. so i kind of wanted to get away from that for the next thing i you know, to get out from under that producer label right where i could just sit back and worry about the music and let somebody else take care of all that so excited about that cool now when you know, you're out on the road and stuff like that when, um, you know, younger kids or older kids, whatever you want to call it, um, come up and ask for an autograph. What's that feeling like to you? It blows me away. I mean, we've we've been together a long time to be, as I guess you would say, like you said, as young as we are. You know, we're, you know, the average age of about 30. Um, got some younger members and some older members, but we've been together 16 years. So when we get a fan to come up and ask for a picture or an autograph or just to say, Hey man, y'all guys rock. You know, y'all, y'all did amazing. It means a whole lot to us because there was a lot of years that we had to go through to get to that point. So we're very appreciative of our fans and we would do anything we could, you know, to make them happy. Hence the 17 song album and things of that nature. And we plan on doing some, what we're, we're going to call expansion packs like right. you would see in the gaming community right. um, to, to that album because we had 40 songs so you know if people will keep their eyes open you know and a couple months down the road we may throw four or five more songs out to this album cool 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 now is there any special like things uh, like on a tour rider that you would ask for when you're out on tour <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> well first we'd have to have a rider um <laughs> But well, if we did, I mean, not like we're, man, we're so laid back. We're used to not having anything, you know, so it's, I mean, to, to put it this way, the last time we were out on the road for an elongated period, I mean, we're used to having a cooler in the back of our truck right. with white bread and bologna and maybe mayonnaise and mustard, maybe right. a can of tuna. We'd stop at a truck stop, make sandwiches, eat, hop back on the road. I mean, so like when somebody says rider, we're like, what? <laughs> Wow. Like, are you going to send us the bill for this or what? You know? Like, I know. Yeah. So, I mean, we don't even know how to deal with that kind of thing, really, because, I mean, we're just happy to be there and be playing. So, not really. There's nothing crazy that we ask for. Cool. Now, you hooked up with Chipster. Tell me a little bit about that, uh, how'd that work out? Oh, that's that, that's amazing, man. And like, like you had mentioned, Chip is just a great guy, and I've got to know him 
um, pretty well over the past six months. Um, I found him actually through the band Three Years Hollow um, that I realized that he was doing PR for them. Right. Um, and I got in contact with him because I was going to get Three Years Hollow an interview uh, with a buddy of mine, David Ray, who does the Global Rock Show. Um, and I was just uh, getting in contact with him for that yeah. since he was, you know, doing their press. Right. And I was like, hey, man, you know, also we've got this band and we've been together really long time and we're at this point that we're releasing an album and we really need a PR company and you know would you be interested in working with us and me and him chatted it up for a while you know kind of got to know each other and then you know it came to the point where yeah we were ready to go and he brought us on board and I can't speak highly enough of this guy because any group who's been out in the music industry especially in the rock metal community knows how many crooks there are out there right just waiting to take advantage of bands that don't know you know and we got we got extremely lucky with chip wow um and and you know him you know you probably know him a lot longer than i have and you know that he's just a stand-up guy yes very much he's already done a world of good for us in the couple months we've been working together so we we expect you know this business relationship friendship to go on as long as he can because he's just a great guy we're really happy to be working with him cool now what are the plans for the rest of the year for the band um well the next few months i mean we're already we've got shows on the books but we're kind of playing sporadically here and there uh we're building our online fan base community getting our awareness and exposure up and that's kind of chip's goal right now is just to build our exposure um you know get us interviews like we're doing and get us in some press and you know anything that pops up and uh we're hoping by the end of summer to be on some tours. Cool. And uh, hopefully that will kind of run us into the end of 2014, where we'll kind of, you know, probably be gearing down to get in the studio to knock out that acoustic album. So if people, you know, keep their eyes on our websites, mckayzieband.com, you'll hopefully we'll have some tour dates coming up. Um, that you'll be able to see and maybe hopefully get out in your area to see us this summer sometime. That sounds great to me. Brutally beautiful. Look, I got it right. You got it. (laughs) Congratulations on the new CD. Clark Walker, AZ, it's a pleasure talking to you, man. And uh, would you like to say say anything to the fans out there? Um, Just thank you all so much for listening. And I promise you, if you give our album a chance, at least one song will get stuck in your head. I promise. (laughs) Cool, cool, cool. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks, man. Bye-bye.